Covering the community, events, and people of Georgia, Carolina, this is the Means Report. Here is Brad Means. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Means Report. So happy to have you with us on this Sunday. We promise to make the next 27 minutes or so of your life worthwhile. And what else do you have to do? It's been raining for like a million straight days in Augusta as of this Thursday afternoon taping, and I'm sure it'll be the same come the weekend. But anyway, we hope that you stay nice and dry inside and enjoy the Means Report today. We're going to talk about an issue during the bulk of this broadcast that impacts every single one of us, and that is transportation in the great state of Georgia. And there is no agency that is busier at the moment or in the future than the Georgia Department of Transportation. And we have two of the leaders of that agency with us today, the gentlemen who help decide what goes on on our roads, bridges, waterways, and airports. So you'll want to stick around for that segment. You'll learn a lot, I promise. And you'll get a better feel for what's going on transportation-wise and road-wise right here at home. Also, how about this? Teens making a difference. We have several stories to prove that kids are doing good things in the world that will inspire you to have hope in your teenager under your own roof once you see what these other youngsters are up to, including one who decided to just take the opposite approach from all kids when it comes to social media. Those stories coming up on the Means Report. But first, as promised, we're going to begin with the Department of Transportation. And as I said, there's a ton going on when it comes to that organization that controls more than two billion with a B of your tax dollars. That's how much cash goes out when it comes to keeping things running smoothly in Georgia. Don Grantham is the chairman of the State Transportation Board. He's also a stranger to no one in our viewing audience, a longtime civic and political leader. Don Grantham is with us and right alongside Don is Russ McMurray, commissioner on the Department of Transportation and commissioner and chairman, thank you all both for taking the time to be with me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. And before we, I want to ask Russ a bunch of questions about projects that are going on out there. But uh, Don, first of all, you just uh, helped clear the way, you and your fellow transportation board members, for a gigantic chunk of money to go toward helping Georgia. Yes, we did, Brad. We had uh, a request from the governor for us to approve a budget. Uh, that included $750 million, mm. uh, and that was provided by the HB 170, which now, was a bill passed last year. Yeah, that was the huge bill that the General Assembly approved, and uh, it does give a lot of money. There's another $800 million if you can stretch that 750 out till January, and then it's all going to go in that $2 billion pot to help us. Now, you said something scary after the Transportation Board gave that money. You said uh, you're going to see cones and barrels everywhere in Georgia Russ, that's bittersweet because it feels like they're everywhere now, but that's a good thing, right? Absolutely, it's a good thing, and it's a, such an important day in Georgia for what the legislature did last year, or earlier this year, rather, in passing this transportation funding. And, of course, this area in the central Savannah River area in Augusta, Richmond, and Columbia County, and everybody around has already been positively affected from the TIA, or T-SPLOS, that's ongoing. But now with this added revenue, we can really start taking care of our needed infrastructure and repaving roads and giving our roadsides in good conditions and looking good. So that means a lot more orange cones and orange barrels out there. So we're asking everybody to be patient with us as next summer rolls around when we really get into the construction season and the maintenance season. You're going to see us out there and uh, just ask everybody to be careful. Don Grantham, how does your transportation board decide or how does it prioritize projects? You have people from every single county and municipality in this state saying, we need you to help us transportation-wise, roads and bridges-wise. How do you decide? Well, Brad, most of the counties or cities uh, have their own engineering department, mm -hmm. and they know the needs that they have, and they present those to us and t through our district offices throughout the state. And those district offices then uh, make that request to our uh, head office in Atlanta, uh, which Russell, our commissioner, heads up. Uh, from that point, it is brought to our board uh, with, a rec with a recommendation uh, based on the need for that county. And uh, based on that, based on what uh, our staff provides for us, then we either pass or we do, we do not pass. Nine times out of ten, we pass it because we know these, these members of our staff are very qualified and they bring us the right things to do. 
Is it something that can ever be handled via phone calls or email, or does all this officially take place at those, those transportation board meetings? The majority of the approval of projects take place at the transportation board meetings. However, there are some projects that are given a fast track, and that's based on a request by the uh, uh, district board member or by the city requesting that particular project. A lot of your money for maintenance comes from gasoline taxes on both regular and diesel gas. It comes from truckers, from electronic vehicle owners, and from people who stay in hotels. Are you starting to see that newfound revenue kick in and help your bottom line? Indeed, uh, what the uh, Transportation Board just passed this week was the direct effect of those revenues that came in from the change in the fuel tax and the fees that you mentioned, which is the positive impact of about $750 million additional dollars mm -hmm. over the already budgeted about $1 billion. That is a lot of money. And we take that very seriously to make sure that we're good stewards of those taxpayers' dollars and those fees that are coming in now such that we can deliver for the citizens of Georgia because as you, as you just asked about where do projects originate from or how do you get the word out, there's needs everywhere across the state. Every city, every county has needs. We have needs on the interstate right here with I-20 being a, such an artery for the commerce of the state, yeah. how critical it is. And the other thing, sort of going back to where those projects originate from, all the viewers here today can, if they see a project or a need, they need to reach out to their elected official, let them know what that is. They know how to get those channels of communications back to our state transportation board members, to our planning director who's appointed by the governor, Jay Roberts, uh, is doing that role so that we know, I mean, we know a lot of these needs, but as things change and emerge, a project can originate from anywhere. And that's sort of the beauty of it, can be very organic of a local need that gets gets uh, spread and understood and then can become a reality. And a lot of people in the transportation business, Don Grantham, probably look at you, both of you, and see dollar signs as well they should because of all the revenue that's there to be spent. But my question is how close can contractors, paving companies, get to you? You mentioned the local engineers come forward with their wish list, but then the men and women who do the work, how do they get a piece of the pie? Well, the way they uh, get it, Brad, is that these bids are put out. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to do that based on state law. Well, all of these contractors are certainly uh, looking for the projects that they can handle best mm -hmm. and provide the best bid that they can for us. Uh, therefore, uh, they're always talking about different projects. They always want to know what's coming up next. And certainly, we like to keep them informed. Let me ask you this, and Don, you can chime in if you need to, because Russ, I don't expect you to know every project in <laughs> Georgia. There's too many. But let's look at some big ones in our area work and we thank you for it is wrapping up on Wrightsboro Road here not too far from the television station. I know a lot of the people watching, watching wish you would make Wrightsboro smoother from say Bobby Jones down to Highland or beyond. It's just a l series of holes and ruts. Any plans to do anything more on Wrightsboro and how's the Riverwatch project going? Well, let me, let me first take that on Wrightsboro because that is, a, that is the perfect example of why additional revenue was needed. Mm -hmm. And one big piece of our revenue we hadn't talked about was federal. And that's until this recent passage of this legislation, we, did, we were solely relied on federal funding to deliver our capital maintenance program and our capital construction program. And in fact, today, uh, as, as we sit here today, the House uh, in, uh, Transportation Committee has now have the passage from the House of Representatives in Congress to pass a uh, transportation bill. That has, uh, that has not been in place now. We're on the 34th extension from federal dollars uh, to fund transportation, and currently we're only funded through the end of this month. Mm. So it's very hard to deliver to the citizens when we've been living on these little short-term extensions federally. And Wrightsboro Road is a perfect example of deferred maintenance because we have not had the revenues to do so. so We'll be putting that in priority order and mm -hmm. be looking forward as these new revenues come in so that we can address projects just like that. You're right, there's actually, there's, there's, rough, there's rough spots, oh. it's corrugated, you know, it's not, uh, it's past its service life. It's done what it should do, but it's time to get rehabbed. And those are now, are the abilities that we'll have to do as this new revenue will come in, which would be in the spring, that's when this first revenue would actually be uh, available for us to use. So we're preparing now getting up quantities, uh, putting projects lists together, 
and working our way so that when those revenues are available that we can get out and start implementing very soon, bidding these projects out to contractors, getting that low bid the best value for our taxpayers, sure. and getting the work out on the ground, which results in those orange cones. What about uh, River Watch? Are you pleased with the way things are going as they resurface and extend that roadway? And are the people who live along it okay with everything? Well, we're, we're pleased with it, uh, Brad. We have a good contractor out there in, in the uh, uh, Snell company that does the work for us. Uh, certainly, we're going to make some people not happy. Right. But uh, you have to look at it that the, the, the orange cones are a sign of progress, mm -hmm. and that's what I've always said. Just slow down, take your time, give us a chance to get these projects completed, and uh, we'll make you happy once it's over. Uh, I want to drop back to the Wrightsboro Road project with you, if you yes, don't sir. mind. Yeah, please. And, and that is, Russell touched on it very, very smartly from the standpoint of federal dollars. But projects like Wrightsboro Road, like Highway 56, like Windsor Spring Road, have been on the shelf for a number of years mm -hmm. because the local city, the local governments did not have the matching dollars that they needed to get those federal funds. Well, the TIA program gave us that opportunity, the Transportation Investment Act. And when we passed that locally, as you well know, uh, that gave us dollars that we could put into certain projects to match the dollars needed mm -hmm. for federal funding. Therefore, Riceboro Road, Highway 56 and Windsor Spring Road has become a TIA project for us. I'm not going to overlook your buttons that you're wearing, your pins that say drive alert, arrive alive. Sadly, the state of Georgia reached a milestone last month that it didn't want to reach 1,000 deaths on our roadways. What's the DOT doing to try to improve safety or at least awareness? Yeah, well, thank you for that. And let me touch on that because this is a serious, serious issue that's going on in Georgia. In fact, today we're over 1,150 fatalities on our road. Mm. One thing that we've just started back in February to throughout the agency is making sure everybody knows that that's not a number, that these are, these are lives, these yeah. are affected families. And so we put all our efforts into safety and all that we do and we can do more. We do a lot of things already for safety. We actually, when we resurface roads now, we bevel the edges of the pavement. So if somebody runs off the road, hopefully they can recover. We're putting a lot of money into uh, fresh stripes and signs so that you have good visibility out there, especially as when it's been as rainy as it has been this week. We need all the help we can get and see in the stripes on the road. So we have to continue to make those investments. But right now, the data and the statistics we're seeing are things that are not really capital kind of projects or really uh, tangible projects, but the data is telling us some disturbing things. First, we're only seeing about 41% of the fatalities are people wearing seat belts, that we can determine that people are wearing seat belts. So we all know to buckle up. I can't believe people still don't. Still don't yeah. buckle up. And mm -hmm. when you see that kind of number, it just really gives us concern. Secondly, is we're seeing about 49% of these fatalities thus far this year are single vehicle accidents, mm -hmm. meaning nobody else is involved. For whatever reason, people are losing control of their vehicles, running off the road, hitting objects, overturning, or for somehow being a fatal crash. And when you see that number, that's a much higher percentage than it's ever been. And we don't have direct correlation, but we like to think statistically that it has to be a direct correlation to distracted driving. Oh, yeah. So, so uh, we are really want to be focused on that. We've partnered with several cell phone providers again to message and campaign to make sure people know to put their phone down, to turn it off. Number one, just turn it off. And yeah. there's apps for that, as they say. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so please, you know, get the app that turns your phone off when you get over a certain speed. And just not be distracted by that, that text or, or call. It's not worth it. Even, mm -hmm. even the data shows that just talking on the phone is a distraction, even hands-free. So hands-free is better, uh, but if you can just avoid it altogether, it's significant. It and is. It, it's a big deal. Please forgive me for interrupting. I don't want to sure. run out of time. There's so many issues to cover with the Department of Transportation, <clears throat> and I'm glad that you all are covering them with me. And, and please heed what Russ said, folks, and put those phones down when you're driving. Look into the future, Don, if you will, and talk about some things that are on the horizon. I saw recently where bridge work is underway on the Fall Line Freeway. We've always dreamed of this fast, efficient route from Augusta down to Columbus. How close is that to reality? And if can you give us a timetable of when we might drive down that Fall Line? Well, as far as the actual date, I, I can't give you that, Brad, <laughs> yeah. but I can say that work is going on 
uh, in the Oconee area mm -hmm. as far as the, the uh, uh, Milledgeville area is concerned. And that last nine miles, I believe it is, being worked on uh, uh, calls for us building 11 bridges in that one nine mile stretch. So that's happening and once yeah. that's completed, uh, we want to make it a big, big splash and a good announcement uh, that the people will be able to go from Augusta to Columbus or from Columbus to Augusta. And I'll let either one of you tackle this last one, and it's just on the high-speed rail front. Anything to look for in that regard as we try to keep up with the changing times and with other uh, countries who have high-speed rail? Right. Uh, actually, there's a big initiative on the southeast for the southeast corridor, uh, working with Virginia and North Carolina. They are in an uh, intergovernmental pact or interstate pact. South Carolina and Georgia has been to the table now talking about that. Uh, trying to learn from where they are. Uh, obviously, Virginia is a little bit further ahead, and North Carolina has rail service already. Uh, but so we're working through some environmental work now. That's always the first front that you have to do any kind of you take on a project. So we're looking at Atlanta to Charlotte uh, right now. We've been under that study, obviously, probably a year ago or so. You may remember some public meetings talking about that and looking at which route it would take. Well, we can't determine any route until you sort of do an analysis of what all the impacts are. So we're working through that. It's actually several years of work. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality is it will be many years before anything is implemented, but we have to be thinking about the future. You're, you're spot on in thinking about how, what does our transportation future look like. Rail obviously is a component of that that has to be considered, give serious consideration, and then work forward from here. Russ McMurray, Georgia's Department of Transportation Commissioner, and Don Grantham, State Department of Transportation Board Chair. Thank you both for being here. I have about a zillion more questions, but uh, you're probably glad we ran out of time. But I appreciate both of y'all being here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for doing it. Absolutely. And be safe out there, everybody. When you see those crews, be careful. When you see those cones, think of these two men. That is what they are all about these days. When we come back, teenagers who can inspire you. Yes, it's true. Gather around the television with your youngins. We'll be right back.